Auzu billahi minash shaitanir racim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ashrafil mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Rasulul Kareem, Habib al-Azim. Madad ya Sayyidiya Sultanul Awliya wa Shaykh Abdul Faiz Daghestani, Sultanul Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Adam Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Shaykh Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Abd Khalik al-Khujdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Wa Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sabbaqa Sayyidi Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Wa Sayyidatina Fatima Tuzah alayhi salam, Wa Sayyidina Wa Sayyidatina, Wa Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil Alameen, inshaAllah Allah Azawajal address us from the the light of the holy birth of Sayyidatina Fatima Salam and that Allah Azawajal grant us to be raised under her holy feet, on, under her shade on the day of uh, judgment inshaAllah and Ursa Mubarak for the blessed Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq, our beloved grandfather of the Naqshbandi Tariqah that inshaAllah from his holy heart all the realities of Naqshbandiyya flowing out through the Ahlul Bayt and holy companions all the way to Allah fi samahi wa fil ard that Allah raise us under His holy feet, under His holy shade and that His blessed nazar always to be dressing upon us and to grant us from Siddiqiyya reality that later became Naqshbandiyya reality that all of these from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad like the Kaaba shows us on the door that the two doors one of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and one from Imam Ali and Nashbandiyatul Aliya takes from both those secrets and is the two wing tariqah and the two oceans of reality that Ahlul Bayt deposited that reality into the reality of the Siddiqiyya reality. And then alhamdulillah Allah dressed us and blessed us to be from Nashbandiyatul Aliya. That is Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Siddiq al Mutlaq to watch over us as his uh, beloved grandchildren to take care of us and to draw us near to the heart and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. InshaAllah, fa'awuzu billahi min ash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, wa atiullah, tiya Rasul, ulul amri minkum, wa na'abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskinu zalim wa jahal. And alhamdulillah Allah give us a life and forgive us our wrongdoings and that we are nothing. And we took a path in which to be nothing in these days of difficulty, uh, topic of the jinn and unseen forces, all of these realities play a tremendous understanding in last days. Every sickness and disease. Every every difficulty is related to that world that insan is being affected by and for us to understand that world and how it's integrating into this world, how Prophet described the pandemics as an attack from their world that the marada and the shayateen and, and the bad intended jinn that people call aliens and, and, and spaceships and abductions, all of this are from the jinn race and their number ten times the human number. Their reality is of a fiery nature, as a result of their fiery nature their unstable creation. That angels being from water and water is stable. And the angels of, of light and reality because some people say, oh I thought they're from light. Yes, they're from light but they carry the secret of my. And the secret of my is that it's a, a very stable matter and to, to be like water means that you're stable, you're neither igniting and you're not going up or you're not going down. That even in its cold state water keeps its secret because the miraculous nature of water is that it freezes from the top down, not from the down up otherwise all the lakes and rivers would be frozen and our life would cease to exist. 
Water has an immense reality and Allah describes that my creation was… my throne was upon this power and that this creation is coming from the reality of water. And this angelic nature and its stable reality is what Allah wants for us to move towards the reality of that stable element. The element of fire is unstable by its nature, those creatures are unstable and as a result they are in a perpetual state of war. When we understand that their nation and their reality is continuously battling, continuously fighting and their lifetime is in the thousands of years, not like our life our lifespan of 80, 90 or even 100, 120 years, 130 years. Theirs are in the thousand, there are 2000, 3000 years that the jinn life is in existence. Many of the jinn sahabi are still in existence. So it means the jinn world is not something that is, is clearly understood by insan but as a result they know that their nature is of a fiery nature and as a result their nations are in perpetual battles, continuously fighting. As a result of those battles and those difficulties when they attach themselves, the negative beings and negative entities and they attach themselves to human clans and human tribes and, and human beings those battles outlive many generations of humans and that's some of the understanding why some families are in a perpetual difficulty. If for some reason 100 years ago, 200 years ago for example there's some sort of a difficulty and one of the more nefarious beings have attached themselves to that family. Their lifespan again is a thousand, two thousand years, that person lives a hundred. But when that person passes they're still attacking that family line and they have generations of difficulty because of the lifespan of that enemy. When the enemy lives two thousand years and you live one hundred uh, it's about twenty spans of life that they're attached to people. So this is an understanding towards why negativity, why, why certain people have these difficulties and it's, it's important to understand that realm, to understand the energy realm and not to research them per se but to understand that when we're teaching by energy and the importance of energy how to make the connection, it's by default protecting you against that. Instead of focusing on the problem they teach the solution. So if somebody wants to just teach about that realm and it's scary and, and recite scary things to people but they don't teach you again the solution. Again like looking for, for zhuzh and majuj for what? Are you planning on digging them up and helping them out? So the, the point of these teachings was for the solution. If, if you don't believe in energy then we have to validate and say, no, no, the nefarious energy is the source of all your sickness, all the sources of your difficulty. Every type of, of hardship that coming towards insan is they're attaching and they're attacking and they're causing difficulties. So its solution is the understanding of one's personal development how to resonate at a much higher reality, how to make your connection to the best of power sources, the most eternal source of power which is Allah through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is immensely important. When people are emailing and, and describing that this is an example of the problem then remind me to go back towards its solution. When people are emailing that, uh, I, I took your advice and I'm listening to the talks and I'm starting to recite Dalal Khirat and all sorts of difficulties are now happening, I'm having all sorts of uh, bizarre energy feelings, all sorts of this and that and this and that, so what should I do and I, I, I didn't sign up for this. Again like anything else when, when we don't understand 
how bad our environment is. And like going to a doctor's office and you don't know that you have cancer and you think that every day you're going out and everything is fine and you enter into a doctor's office, they do a scan, they come back and say, by the way, you know, you have cancerous cells, God forbid, all over your body. You're very sick, you just haven't realized that yet. You have to then go for medicine and a lot of times the medicine actually in the purging of the sickness makes every type of negativity come out, there's all sorts of sicknesses and vomitings and all every, – every badness has to come out for the person to return to a state of, of health and goodness and wellness. Imagine then the spiritual realm where that 90% or 99% of the population is going around and they're filled with negativity, filled upon themselves filled from their walk, from their work, from their food, from their drink, from their homes, from the sounds that they hear, from the movies that they watch, from the environment that surrounds them with negativity, they're filled with these negative beings around. They're like a cancer and as soon as you introduce a zikr or awrad, a meditation and that's why it's a full package, you, you, you can't implement some of these things without having a tremendous difficulty, you're required to implement as much as possible. So imagine now you spark a light for us just to understand and then our graphic guys can make it more graphic that we live a life of darkness, everywhere is dark. And like that movie we gave the example was it pitch black or something where you don't know the creatures that are all around. And as soon as we do an action of light, boom, the light goes off. <gasps> And you look around and there's all this negativity that was so happy just sort of living around us and on us and we are like the battery for them. They feed off of our being. As soon as you do an action of light, uh, what happens now? Wajal haqq Wa Allah say that when the truth comes the falsehood perishes and falsehood by its nature zahukan, it's it's crumbling, it's not something that is eternal. So when there's all this negativity and we do an action of haqq means from the heavens that they're hayyun qayyum, the zikrs, the practices, the breathings, these are from the ocean of the hayat and qayyum that it's eternal light, eternal power from Divinely Presence. As soon as you bring this ball of haqq what happens is it begin to attack every type of negativity because the truth and the false they don't sit in the same place and you know, how are you? It brings all sorts of positive energies and, and positive beings. As a result now these positive beings are in a conflict with every negativity around us. And that's exactly what Allah wanted is let the positive light come in and begin to push away all these negativities. So there's of course going to be a, a difficulty, of course there's going to be all sorts of conflict and battles and pushings and every type of positive energy wants to come in and now establish the kingdom of Allah upon the servant and upon the servant's domain. So that requires a tremendous amount of house cleaning. So imagine your house is filled with a bunch of you know horrific uh, motorcycle bikers and gangs and all sorts of difficulties. And one day you decided to bring home a friend who was a police officer. <laughs> yeah. He comes into the house and he, he's not scared of them, he's just going to start you know taking names, shooting, firing and throwing them all in jail. And they're not going peacefully and they're, they're not interested in uh, – they're probably going to try to throw the police officer out. So this is for us just to understand that the depth of the difficulty in which people are living in. And then they're surprised that, oh you know this stuff actually worked but they don't think that way. They just think, oh when I did this all these difficulties started to happen. Uh, that was a sign that it was working. It's like you called the police, heavenly police. When the heavenly police come they absolutely not fearing these creatures at all and they begin to beat them, throw them and kick them out. And that's exactly what is required that they be pushed out of the life of people. But as a result everything the shaykh gave for you to do that, 
was a part of the importance. You put your taweez as your protection, these are ni'mat from heavens. We put the taweez upon the house, I learned the concept of wudu so that I'm clean as they're about to fight, I want to make sure that I have a shield. My shield is the light, my shield is the wudu. I learned then how am I supposed to protect myself while the heavenly beings are getting rid of all of these nefarious creatures, I should be meditating, I should be bringing my light uh, to a much more powerful resonance. So I begin to do my zikr, my awrads. When you're doing awrads, what's happening? So people want to know, is it exactly like this one, is this 13, can I do this awrad, can I do that awrad, can I add more awrads? Just do what they've asked you to do as the basic Naqshbandi awrad and recitation. The reality of that awrad is that as soon as you recite what they asked you to recite, the resonance and the sound vibration and all its barakah and immense realities, they dress the soul. So when they ask you make 70 istighfar, astaghfirullah al-azim, astaghfirullah al-azim, it brings a resonance and an energy onto the soul. And that energy of the soul of istighfar is washing away and hitting at every negativity, every negativity, every negativity. So the whole awrad and the recitation was given and designed for the cleansing, the blessings, makes the soul now to resonate at a much higher level of, of resonance of energy. So when the energy of somebody is raised, what happens? The lower energy can't come because it's now pushing it away. What shaitan wounds is they go back to listening to these bad music and bad movies and bad sounds and bad sounds and before you know you're resonating almost uh, below the level of demons and as a result they just walk right into people, they occupy them, they occupy their heart. You know there's been many children who listen to these rap songs, drink these drinks, play video games and have heart attack and have sicknesses, they have possessions, they have uh, uh, shaking and uncontrollable, they, almost like epilepsy, they, they start to shake and convulse. And people are thinking, oh maybe he's, he was playing too many video games, no it's a possession. They're resonating so low that these creatures are entering and possessing that insan and their natural spirit from Allah doesn't want to surrender the body and that's why they're shaking, convulsing and having difficulty. So these are all spiritual and energy attacks. That's why the shaykhs give the whole package that put the taweez, put the taweez upon the house, make sure you understand wudu, that you're always in wudu and all parts of the body have to be washed. You don't just wash your face and not your, 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 your bottom parts because that's where shaitan will be attacking. Then you fortify yourself, then you practice, I'm going to breathe and bring my energy, I'm going to make my connection. And somebody then emailed, well I thought we only connect with Allah. Uh, again this is like the kindergarten, everything is from Allah. So everyone is connecting to Allah and this is why then anyone who thinks like that, next time you get stuck on the road, don't call a tow truck, just call Allah because everything is from Allah. So he gave you a phone to call for a tow truck because the tow truck is the wasila, it's a means in which Allah will reach to you. Same is for the meditation, tafakkur and contemplation, everything comes from Allah. But if Allah gave these shaykhs and these teachers and, and all this way and energy, when you connect with them and, and breathe like they're telling you to breathe and how to connect your heart, they're like a satellite dish. From whatever excess energy Allah is sending, they're reflecting, they're reflecting. They're not the source of giving you anything, they're merely acting like a satellite dish. And that's the exact reality of Qamarun, that's why we say Qamarun, Qamarun because those whom they don't act like they're a source of light, they're not competing with Allah, they're not competing with Sayyidina Muhammad they're not telling the world that, I am the one, I am the one, I am the one. They told everyone they're nothing. When someone emails and says, you know, you're fake shaykh, I said, well I never said I was anything, there's nothing to be fake about. So you took a life in which to say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and then the world 
bombarded you, threw stones at you, attack you and you still say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And that was the reality of the Qamarun, the moon. The moon merely in its nothingness has such a love for the sun that it never takes its eye off its course. Means they taught, they taught us all and teach you that you keep your focus on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Whatever somebody curses you, it's not your business, you love Prophet Whatever anyone attack you, you're not this, you're not that, they, alhamdulillah if that's what you think, good for you. I've already told you I'm nothing, I ana abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And keep your focus on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and his love and the immensity of his generosity and that's why we're supposed to recite all these not. <laughs> right? What was the reality of that not is telling us and all the not Sharif are telling us, I just kept following and I kept reciting, I kept doing my mawlid, I kept trying to perfect my akhlaq and my character to be loving so that he doesn't become upset with me and embarrassed from me and as a result he smiles upon me. And when my Lord smiles upon me that's enough energy for this entire universe and that's all that we need. And the shaykhs are, are the reciprocals of this love, they should have a loving character. When you give them salams they should say, Wa alaykum salam because their job is to convey the salams from Allah Salamun, Salamun hi hatta al matla al-fajr that Allah is sending them salams all the way every day to their fajr because they are the people of Qadr, Salamun hi hatta matla al-fajr. If Allah is sending them salams all their life they were taught then give everybody salams, keep saying Wa alaykum as salam, Wa alaykum as salam so that whatever Allah is sending of lights you are merely a reflector of that, you send it back to people. That's why they say don't put these emojis of love and it's just a mirror, your love is for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad you don't have to focus the mirror, the mirror is just reflecting a light to you, reflecting that reality and that's their teaching. As a result they're reflecting, reflecting so then when you're learning how to meditate and contemplate you're asking for that reflection of Allah the reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad by Allah's order, Atiullah wa Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. So Allah's first command was, obey me. Obey Sayyidina Muhammad and obey the Ulul Am. Why? Because your obedience and ihtiba to me is not anything that you can come clear and near. Are you saying that you're at the level of Prophet to, be, to obey me? No, look at yourself and what you're doing wrong and what I'm doing wrong. So then he made it to be merciful, I know you're not going to be able to obey me so you obey Rasul. Make your life to obey Prophet if you're just coming out of the swamp, how are you going to obey Prophet when you don't know anything about Prophet There are people who say, oh shaykh I don't want to follow a shaykh, let me go read the fiqh book. More after 15 years of reading fiqh you'll realize, oh what are you supposed to recite at fajr time? SubhanAllah wa hamdi, SubhanAllah radhim astaghfirullah A lot of people didn't know that that was in the sunnah of fajr. And that, that recitation 100 times daily would take away all your obstacles for that day. SubhanAllah wa hamdi, SubhanAllah wa nadeem astaghfirullah Prophet taught that that zikr at fajr time will take the obstacles away for that day. And that's why we followed shaykhs because they were like walking schools for us when they conveyed these awrads and these zikrs and these practices. It's as if you studied a hundred years of fiqr by reading and imitating, just do what they did, recite what they recited 
And before you know it you are in complete compliance of what Sayyidina Muhammad wanted. So then as a result we understood there's no way for us to, to understand these hadiths, understand these realities, understand this fiqr. So then Allah made it even easier and obey the ulul amr. So by obeying the ulul amr Allah doesn't care for dunya. Allah is telling you, you should be in complete obeyance with the ulul amr at all times with your physicality and most important with your spirituality. So when I'm connecting, I'm asking to connect and make my heart and my soul to be connected with these ulul amr. That what Allah wanted of these commands, what Allah wanted of my character, what Allah wanted of these realities, reflect them to me, reflect them into my heart. Inspire me towards goodness because you are the Muhammadan symbols of these realities. That's why then they teach about the Muhammadan reality that Allah describes Prophet shahidan, mubashiran wa nadheeran. This is Holy Qur'an The Prophet shahidan, he's a witness to you. Is this before, long time ago? At every moment. Prophet is witnessing you, as salaamu alayka yuhal nabi in your salah. As a result we understood his shahidan always watching. Mubashiran means he brings the glad tidings and lights and blessings and every type of reflection from Divinely Presence is reflecting upon our soul and dressing our reality when nadheeran is that he's then warning and teaching wasallam. If he's sending the good light, he's also sending the isharat that don't do that, don't, don't get involved in that, keep yourself away from something sort of mischievous or something questionable. So continuously Prophet wasallam is like the shepherd guiding us away from bad and dressing us with immense realities and blessings. And the Ulam are the inheritors of that reality that they reflect that reality, they give those mubashiran and glad tidings and lights and emanations. And nadheeran is that all their teachings are a warning and a guidance that stay away from this and do this, stay away from this and do this. As a result they're reflecting these lights and these blessings to people. So of course then people when they're connecting and washing and studying then they learn how to do these madad. Then there's going to be all sorts of difficulties and conflicts that have to be resolved. So the people whom are living in difficulties, they don't understand the immensity of what these jinn nations and their energies and what type of uh, attacks they're trying to do upon people, what type of difficulties they're trying to put upon people. And in the last days their dominance is coming in full force. The Dajjal is a jinn and he's going to imitate the human personality and 99% of all humans now are possessed by these beings. They look human but they're not human, they're not human in the food they want, the character they have and 90% of these shayateen and these jinn their food is the flesh and bones of mankind, that they eat human beings. And their desire is to eat human beings. They're not coming here to teach human beings. The humans are on the menu. When they say to serve mankind, there was an old movie from the Twilight Zone and they put on a ship and there was a nice thing and it says to serve mankind. But that was a menu. <laughs> yeah. The awliya they're here to serve, means they are the servants of Allah to serve. When they say serve means that you're on the menu and they're looking to eat you. And this is from even tafsir of uh, Mawlana's tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. This was evidenced by Sayyidina Muhammad that there are nations of them on the moon and they have been trying to come towards the earth and attack the earth. And I believe there's a hadith and that they'll find that hadith of when Sidna Fatima salam had gone to Prophet very distressed and said, why are you distressed my beloved Fatima? He said, because Sayyidina Ali he vanishes for periods of time 
maybe he's taken someone else and I'm very disturbed by that. And Prophet described, no, no, this, this is not about that issue, I'm sending him off of this earth as a protection. Imam Ali and Nadi Ali, the one that we recite, he's a, is a great guardian, his soul and his spirit is a guardian of this universe. We can't imagine the immensity of what Allah has given of power and qudra. And from that time Prophet was describing his battles and what type of entities are trying to come towards this earth, occupy the earth and to, to serve mankind on their menu. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding that no doubt when you start to do positive actions many negative things are going to be clashing. And the aqeedah, the most dangerous aqeedah right now that shaitan is spreading. He said, how the dajjal will pull the Muslims from their source of power? If you understand that your source of power is a key called Muhammadun Rasulullah If you stick that key into the reality of Allah then he's the mifta rahmah that with the understanding of Muhammadun Rasulullah you open la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azeem that hawla and quwwa will reach the servant when they keep the understanding of la ilaha illallah but will only come to you by the power of Muhammadun Rasulullah and accepting the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad as the one whom reflects the reality of La ilaha illallah. So hawla and quwwa and power is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So in every difficulty you have to reach to the hand, inna ladheena yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah that Prophet's hand has to come, accept you, hold on to you and Allah's might and majesty will be dressing you and flowing into the hands from the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So means his hand has to be there, your hand has to be locked onto that. If for a moment shaitan take you to lose that hand, you're, there's a song called Dust in the Wind. You're just dust in the wind. Haji Shama Asha, isn't there a song called Dust in the Wind? Yeah, that's it. Means that you lose the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad then they're just dust in the wind. So if, if you know that that's the secret, the secret is the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad then what is Dajjal doing? He is going to bite at your fingers, take your hand off of Prophet Take your hand off. And so his aqeedah and his belief from beginning of time his father is his father's belief. His father's belief shaitan, his belief was just Allah. I love Allah and I don't care for any of Bani Adam and any of the descendants of Adam and Eve. So anyone who has the belief of just Allah and no one from Adam and Eve of, is of any benefit to me, that is the belief of Satan. So it sounds like, oh we are the people who believe that, say, no, no you're not the people who believe that. That's the belief of Satan. Satan's belief is and he believes in God and he cannot stand Adam and Eve and that's why he makes them to do awful things bad and, and, and disgusting things because he keeps going back and showing to Allah that, look, look I, how much I loved you and you love these, this creation and look how bad they're doing. So that's the blasphemous nature of his character. He wants to show and degrade and de denigrate uh, human beings and say, this is your, your, your khalifa and, and this is the, the creation that you chose over me as a rival and, and as of a worst of character. Instead of serving the creation that Allah loves, He wants to bring them down to show He is much better. So when you understand that He loves Allah and His belief is between Him and Allah there is nothing. And if you believe that 
this is a satanic belief. And the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah is that La illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, the Prophet is our essential element within our belief and that Allah is not happy with a servant that doesn't have the love and understanding of Sayyidina Muhammad within their being, within their wujud. And then awliyaullah come to teach us even higher and higher that there is nothing but La illallah and Muhammadun Rasulullah, get rid of yourself. If I don't exist, I don't exist, I don't exist, all that exists is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result of this love and this immense love of Muhammadun Rasulullah every type of light and beauty of Prophet is dressing from Allah's Divinely Source and Divinely Power. Last days everyone begins to say these words that, oh no, no, there's no need for you, there's no need for him, there's no need for anyone. No, oh, Prophet brought the Qur'an, uh, we don't even have to mention the hadith anymore. Many masjids not, don't even mention hadith, they're just Ahl Qur'an. Now who brought you the Qur'an? Who brought you the… if you don't celebrate the holy birth of Prophet who brought Islam for you, who brought the Qur'an for you, you take away your key. When you take away the key all that's left for you is a lock. And that's all shaitan wants is take the key out so that I can eat these people. If that key is in these people are not edible. They have a, someone who's very powerful protecting them. So what shaitan wants then in the last days and you hear more and more from people, oh no we just only Allah, oh, only Allah, only Allah. What happened to Muhammadun Rasulullah and then all the hadith and all of these realities are coming from that. If you negate the source and you negate the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah then you start to say there's no need for Ahlul Bayt, no need for a sah sahabi, no need for this, no need for that, everything is a shirk, everything is a bidah, the, the rocks are a bidah, let's cut down the trees. I saw a video they were cutting down a tree because they said this has a barakah. Then the, the crazy devil cults came in and said, oh cut down anything that has a barakah. All of these are in hadith, all of these are in realities. The pebbles were praising Prophet he could hear them, he could hear the zikr of them. The tree stump in which Prophet sat upon it was crying when Prophet wasn't sitting upon it. All of these realities that Allah described, all of creation is in praising but you haven't the ears to hear except the people of tafakkur and contemplation. We pray that Allah keep us connected to the power source, keep us always flowing with this immense muhabbat, immense love and to protect us from the Hizb shaitan and their belief and all that they're propagating and those whom who think that and as a result they're under immense attack, more sickness coming, more difficulties coming, more attacks coming and one by one their hand kind of lifting until they become dust in the wind and that's all the shaitan wounds. We pray that Allah keep our hands firm with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah and to, to end tonight inshaAllah with a reminder for myself to recite the bayah and our initiation into the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Let me just pull this up and ready to go. Let's see which one we have there. InshaAllah asking to be under the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad under the hand of uh, all Ashab and Nabi Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Uthman, Ali, Imam al Hassan, Imam Hussain, all Ahlul Bayt, their nazar be upon us. And under the Sultanate of Sultan and Awliya Ma'a Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan and Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandiya. Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil under the great nazar of awliyaullah, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani and all awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard that their nazar be upon us, their madad and, and, 
and dad their support to be upon us inshaAllah for we are weak servants. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna ladina yubayyanuka ila ma yubayyoon Allah, Yaad Allahi fawka aydihim, Faman naghudu fa inna man yaghudu ala nafsi wa man awfa biwa ahad alayhullah fa sayyatun ajran azeeman. Raniya billahi rabban wa islami deenan wa bi Sayyidina wa Nabiyyana Muhammadun sallallahu alaihi wasallam Rasulun wa Nabiyyun wa bi Qur'ani kitaban wallahumma naqulu wakeel wa islami deenan wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanil awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adam Shaykhuna wa Murshidina ma naqulu wakeel Allahu 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 Haq Allahu 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 Haq Allahu 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 Haq Haqqu Ya Rabbi Ya Allah illa sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa ana min shaykhina fi tariqat al-Nashbandiyyat al-Aliyya Qasatan ruhi man tariqa ghawta khaliqa shan naqshban Muhammad Waisa al-Bukhari, Sultana Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani, Sultana Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Ma'abd Khaliq al-Khujdawani, Sahal Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sahib Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatuna Fatima al-Tizar alayhi salam, Fi Shahr al-Mubarak, Fi Laylat al-Mubarak, Laylat al-Urs al-Mubarak, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq alayhi salam, Jummat al-Mubarak, Wa Sayyir wa Saadatina, وَسِدَقِينَ الْفَاتِحَةِ Click the link now to subscribe.